Leaders of the seven largest industrial nations announced new measures today to try and punish Russia for its invasion of Ukraine. The steps are designed to target Russia's economy and military long term. But in the meantime, Russia's total war in Ukraine marches violently on. Russia's battlefield of choice today, a shopping mall. Moscow continues to claim its targets are military. But Ukrainian officials said the only target of two Russian missiles today was full of more than 1,000 civilians shopping. President Zelensky warned the death toll could be, quote, unimaginable. 800 miles away in the Bavarian Alps, G7 leaders spoke to Zelensky via video link. He told them it is not time to negotiate with Russia and urged them to send more weapons and impose more sanctions. Putin has been counting on from the beginning and somehow NATO would uh, and the G7 would splinter and but we have it and we're not going to. So. The seven leading industrial countries have so far provided Ukraine more than $2.8 billion in humanitarian assistance. Today, they promised to support the country, quote, as long as it takes, and unveiled new steps, a ban on Russian gold, a price cap on Russian oil, sanctions on Russian defense companies, military units accused of war crimes, and officials operating in Ukraine, and higher U.S. tariffs on Russian goods with proceeds used to reconstruct Ukraine. This week, the most advanced U.S. weapons sent to Ukraine arrived. In the dead of the night, Ukrainian soldiers fired the High Mobility Advanced Rocket System, or HIMARS. Ukraine asked for 60. The Biden administration is sending eight, with ammunition whose range is capped at 40 miles. A senior administration official told PBS NewsHour today the U.S. will also send advanced air defense weapons known as NASAMs. But those weapons haven't stopped Moscow's military. Last week, Russia destroyed and captured Severodonetsk, formerly Ukraine's administrative center in Luhansk. And today it's, quote, raining fire down on the twin city of Lysychansk, from which Ludmila fled. What can I tell you? The walls and windows were shaking. You don't know where to hide. For more on the latest round of sanctions from the G7 on Russia, we turn to Alina Polyakova, president of the Center for European Policy Analysis, a nonpartisan organization that seeks to promote U.S.-European relations and democratic values. Alina Polyakova, welcome back to the news hour. Thank you very much. U.S. officials said today that a price cap on Russian oil was among the most important steps that they were going to take uh, from the G7. How would that work, and, and, and could it actually reduce Russian income? Well, it's great to be back on, on the show, Nick, as always. Um, on, on the cap on the oil, you know, it's very unclear how that would be implemented uh, in, 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 real, in real terms. Uh, Russia has expanded significantly its exports to Asia, particularly India and China, uh, where it's been selling discounted um, energy, especially oil, um, to those countries. They've been happily buying it up, it seems, as Europe starts to cut down on its energy imports from Russia. So imposing a cap, uh, where you only have the G7 involved and not those other countries, uh, seems like it's going to be very, very difficult. The G7 is also prohibiting uh, Russian gold. Uh, is that something that could actually uh, reduce Russian income? You know, I think the big picture to keep in mind here is that the sanctions are already having effects on the Russian economy. The Russian economy is going to be contracting Russian uh, inflation of the ruble, uh, is expected to hit, to hit about 20%. So long term, these efforts from the G7 and others will uh, leave the Russian economy incredibly weakened. But I think we're talking about a very different question here. We're talking about the question of whether these sanctions will have a short term immediate effect on Russia's military strategies and its ability to carry out the war on the ground in Ukraine. So far, unfortunately, the answer to that question has been no. Uh, Russia is still carrying out an incredibly brutal offensive in Ukraine. Sanctions have not affected its military capabilities so far. Um, and that is the unfortunate rea reality that we face. The sanctions are having an effect, but it's much more of a long-term effect versus a short-term effect. Perhaps the obvious question then is, are there steps that you believe the West should be taking to have more of a short-term impact that can actually change Vladimir Putin's behavior inside of Ukraine now? Well, I think Mr. Putin believes that he has time on his side right now. He believes that he has the ability to carry out the war um, much longer than the Western alliance will stay united in solidarity with Ukraine. So the meaning of the G7 was very, very important for that reason. It sent a very clear message of unity. But in the short term, we need to listen to what uh, President Zelensky and the Ukrainians are asking for. Ukraine 
needs many, many more of those high advanced MLRS systems that we're talking the about, launch the high Mars system. and others, exactly, and, and others as well, to be able to push back the Russian offensive. There is a clear concern from NATO officials and Ukrainians as well that the Russians might take a break, regroup, and then go back and relaunch their offensive, potentially going after Ukraine's capital, Kiev, yet again. So we're in a very, very dangerous territory right now. And we the best thing we can do is increase military and defense supplies to Ukraine immediately. Now, and certainly senior U.S. officials are worried that Russia has definitely not given up on the longer term uh, idea of capturing Kiev. But back to these sanctions, uh, I wonder, are average Russians suffering because of these sanctions? You know, certainly they are. I mean, we've seen uh, many sanctions affecting average Russians in terms of uh, their ability to travel, certainly um, uh, outside of Russia, um, their ability to purchase uh, foreign goods and services. But at the end of the day, the Kremlin elite, Mr. Putin among them, of course, um, they don't care about the living conditions of the Russian population. Uh, living standards are declining. They're expected to decline further and further um, as these sanctions take hold in the medium and long term. But unfortunately, the Kremlin elite care much more about their direct revenues how much they're able to take to line their pockets. And all of that primarily comes from Russia's energy exports. So until Russia is no longer able to export those energy sources, it no longer has a market for those energy exports. Unfortunately, those revenues will keep flowing. And that is what is feeding uh, the Russian war machine. And the Russian people are suffering as a result. But the Russian elite, those in power making these decisions, uh, don't particularly seem to care about the condition of the Russian people. And Alina Polikova, I've got about 35 uh, seconds left. Uh, so just ask you quickly about companies that, that we, I haven't asked you about. Uh, since Russia invaded Ukraine, obviously hundreds uh, of Western companies have left the country. Uh, is that something uh, that people will notice uh, in the Kremlin and the elite uh, and, and could change their behavior? I think certainly Russians have been noticing that, you know, there's no more McDonald's, for example, um, in Russia. Uh, but now we, what we've seen happen is McDonald's, for example, uh, sold off all of its uh, uh, franchises to a Russian oligarch who's now basically replaced McDonald's with a Russian brand. And that's what we're seeing the Russian government do is kind of provide uh, government funded alternatives, um, even to things like Instagram with the Russian government ban, McDonald's, other services that Russians are used to. So Russians are certainly noticing uh, whether it's affecting them, whether they care. Um, my, it seems to me that they unfortunately do not. Uh, to be clear, the poorer the Russian population is, the more they have to think about their daily needs. How am I going to support my kids? Where's my pension uh, going to come from and cover my prescription drugs, things of that nature? Uh, the more that benefits uh, the Kremlin, which can carry out anything it wants in the foreign policy domain, while the Russian people um, have to make ends meet and don't worry so much about what's happening abroad. Alina Polyakova, always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.